Love Story by John Bulletin. A very noir cover there. Looks like something from a, a sort of Citizen Kane movie. It's about two people caught up in a life of turmoil through drugs, through love, through disability and through pain, I guess. I'm going to introduce some of the work. I'm not going to introduce all of it. It's just come out. It's a brand new, hot off the press book by John. It is a limited edition of 200 and it, this book is just over eight and a half by 11 and a half. The first 20, 25 I think, 25 copies come with this lovely print which is the cover as you can see and that's the same, roughly the same size, it's about eight and a half by 11 and a half. Back cover, here's the edition number, fistful of books I will put in the information box as well as John's work I will put in the information box and then you can go and purchase this fantastic book. Get this now before it goes and you're not going to get another chance. So there's, it's quite a complex issue this, not just for the story, not just for the, the documentary, but for John and himself because this is the beginning of something else for John in a lot of ways. It's the beginning of a, a bigger book project which is unfolding now and John's in the process of developing his big book which is coming out I think in the next year and that will be with Blue Core Press. So he's on he's on board with that. And this is a sort of prequel, I think, to wh where he's going next and what's happening. And it's a lot of, I think a lot of John's work you don't get to see because of the nature of it. So I think a book's a really good way to have a sort of more of a private audience and a, an audience which is geared to wanting his work. Whereas putting onto the internet, it's, it's something which I think he respects his subject matter a bit and he won't put everything on. So I think John, and book publishing is very important to him and exhibitions and I think there's an exhibition coming as well in the next year. Keep a check on his website for um, the book and the exhibition and everything that's going to unfold in the next year with John. This is Gary. Gary he met on his Nothing to See Here journey when he was shooting guys on the streets, I think in Bradford, and he met Gary and I think there was a natural uh, friendship bond there. He met him, I think, a year later, and Gary had had his leg amputated. And so I, I just judging by the shot, this is a shot earlier on, because Gary still has his leg. I might be wrong. John met Gary again. He asked if he could, after seeing his leg amputated through um, his drug taking, he wanted to take something further and look and, and find out more about Gary and Mary, his partner. So, so Gary's 44, he'd been ejected since he was 15. He drinks booze and his partner Mary is 24. She doesn't use heroin, she smokes crack and also drinks a lot. This was shot in about six months in 2018. John visited them and I'm gonna set the scene and this for me is the shot which I think sets the scene. And it sets the scene in a lot of ways for me this because it's obviously we can, we can look at this human being with a loss of a limb and injecting into his groin um, heroin. He is in a wheelchair and it sets the scene of his flat with the writing on the wall, the use of the wall, the ace, and it's the connotations of ace, and it, it, it's quite a sinister shot, it's quite a clever shot, and it's a very sad shot, and it is a, probably a shot of a man at his lowest in his life. I don't know. But I think for me, regardless of Mary, I think for me, I think the main protagonist in the books is, is, is Gary, and I think the book evolves around him and obviously we'll see a big part that she plays but I think there's another introductory shot here and I'm not going to show you it all in fact I think what I'll do is I'll try my best to show you the right one side so I'll bring this down a little bit let me just check the pages up there so here's a great another set in this scene shot it's a very simple set up but it, it's, it's very standard and it sort of just lets you in and gives you an establishing shot of who they both are. A very solitary guy with his wheelchair and maybe Mary 
who I don't know is messing around, joking and having a bit of fun and maybe that's part of the attraction for each other. They are very opposite in their ways and I wonder if John shot this to show that very big contrast in, the, in their personalities. So there's some powerful stuff, you know, it's, it's right up close, it's in your face, it's everything, you know, and it's stuff which takes a bit of balls to shoot, takes a bit of commitment, and I think you can reflect on this work in a lot of ways. If you look at the subject matter, you can maybe think how fortunate you are not to live this life, or you can have sympathy and empathy for the people and wonder why they got there and how they got there and why they're there. But at the same time, you can work on ways to help people. And I think there, I think that's what John's trying to say with this. He's, he's trying to use it as a way of evoking things within people. You know, I think we're quite hardened as humans to what we see every day. And to some, this may not make a difference. And I think if this can change one person and maybe seeing how they view somebody like this and the, helping somebody in this similar situation, or they can generally help in another way, I think, He's achieved something and but what I want to celebrate is not about what this is about or celebrate the the life they lead I just want to celebrate the photography and I want to look at the photography and how constru and, and just deconstruct the photography but look at some of the things John's looked at and it's it's anarchy isn't it it's like it's chaos I can almost smell it. It feels like when I was a student a little bit, not that I took this amount of drugs, but or I'm saying I took drugs, but it's, I, I can sort of, it just feels like a student flat to me and it's, it's chaos. And what I think is interesting is that in this chaos, they sort of, it feels like they are sort of, they don't see it. They just see themselves. And this is a house which facilitates them being together and them doing their drugs. So nothing else matters, the, the tidiness, the writing on the wall. That's there's total disregard from that. And, and that's fine. And I'm trying to work out what, what sort of John's trying to say within the context of the pictures. And there's a lot of crack taking um, sorry, I don't know if it's crack, it probably, I, I presume it is, and heroin, and there's the injection there. I mean, these take some doing, you know, getting right up, getting the trust of these people. And what's interesting, let's go on to this, right, there's sort of, there's the chaos in the room, there's the clash posted. I don't know if you can see that, the light, and it seems to be a little bit, oh, in fact, it's not the light, it's the actual, it's the sheen on the actual shot itself. So there's a bit of over bleaching on the daylight there, on the frame, so... I thought it was my light. So, right, look, I'll tell you what's interesting. There's this chaos, right? There's the togetherness. But if I step back a little bit, and does that really nice TV, and there's a sort of normality within the room here, isn't there? That big 32-inch TV, which is probably an integral part of their flat, which is, like, really important focal point. And that's a beautiful TV, and it's obviously quite an important facet within their, their living room. And I like the way John's juxtaposed Elton John and The Simpsons and have a, a sort of, in a way, had a bit of tongue-in-cheekness to it. So what I need to do after this shot here, I need to really take it off the left. I, I actually think you should go out and get this before I start showing you the whole lot. I, I will look at it later on and I will go into more detail here in terms of the book later on when maybe it's all sold out and I'm going to skip the next picture because it's got a, a naked female on. So maybe the best way to do this is to cover it with the print. That, that, that's it. I think, I think we're in business now. So again, the coming together, the, the, the framing, the, 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 the love. And there's a, it's like a, it's this amazing disregard to everything, the chaos around them, the chaos, but the bond and the togetherness now. And I'd be interested to know if they're still together.
You need to get this. There isn't much documentary done like this anymore. And it takes a bit of doing, you know, getting into this sort of, getting the trust of somebody. It's quite dangerous as well. It'd be quite a volatile situation. You know, if you've got somebody who reacts badly to the drugs and 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 gets a bit um, aggressive or you really are putting yourself on the line as a as a photographer when you when you were doing these things you know and that's the setting the scene shot which I showed you before um, that shot I'm covering up because so it's it's a very strong shot of genitalia and drugs and then being injected it's a powerful shot I actually quite like that a lot on its own actually it's quite nice but it's a very um, very strong and poignant shot so it is a love story and and it's interesting how different they all are in the shots it's, you can see there's a time lapse on it sometimes they look ill sometimes they look really normal and the place looks normal and they look normal and I, I it's fascinating there's a lot of detail there's good technical awareness it's about symbolism this book you know it's a very symbolic book. It's about contemporary life, isn't it? It's about it's about you and me. It's about all of us. It's about your next door neighbour. It's it's what's happening. It's a reality. And if you you, you wonder, think that somebody can live like this in 2019, and I, it's not a surprise to me. And I think. Having photographed in lots of people's houses all for my life, I, I, I think it's a difficult task to do because you have to keep going back. And when you go to somewhere and say there's a really bad smell in the place and you're not used to it, it becomes quite overpowering and having to spend time there and time there and seeing this emotion of, this, this sort of this sheer brutal emotion unraveling in front of you. I can't, I can't tell you how much how hard that uh, it must be to to continue this. So that's a great shot. Look at that. So we're going through a process here. We've gone to introducing. We've gone to the togetherness. We've looked at the chaos. I think some of the normality with the television. The other normality in this, I guess, is the way they are together, disregarding everything else as what else is going on around them. But now we seem to be having some extra normality with that rehabilitation. And uh, um, is, does this mean that he's coming out of this somewhere? Is he, is he finding a way out? Or is that just a break going back to the chaos of everyday life? I don't know if there's spitting water there, what that is, it's pretty cool. There's obviously a love bond, isn't there? There's a real love here between these two. And you can ask questions what it's about, what's bringing them together. Back to the rehab. And back to the rehab again. And there's a bit more normality here. Look at this. And then final is this a to be continued book I think it probably is I think even if it's not through Gary and Mary there's something else coming on here with somebody else I'd actually like to see I'd like to see where this goes with Gary it might be an interesting second project as a separate study to show an ending to this or another stage and maybe take somebody from this background and really being stuck in this life or being part of this lifestyle they're in to see where they could go next. And what would might be a real skill is documenting that and making it as a sort of continuation with a more positive end to it. Who knows? Maybe this is the positive end. But it's a great book. It's a great study. I've been waffling. 
because I do get inspired when I look at stuff like this and so should you. Get out and buy it, get on Fistful of Books website, get on John Bulletin's website, buy the book, subscribe to the channel and I'll keep putting stuff like this on and I hope I made some sense. Get out there and get it. Thank you very much.